welcome back to the channel. I'm Modi J and we are locked in. It's that time. Power Book 4 Force, Episode 2. Tommy decided to stay in Chicago. Him and his brother, they're about to get some things together. And also we got Diamond and his brother Jannard trying to make something happen for CBI. But before we jump into this episode, shout out to the notification game. If you're new to the channel, you want to be a part of it, hit the subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Hit that like button, it's the easiest thing you can do. Now, they're in Chicago, the Flynn family, we see that they're running things. We see that Walter also wanted Tommy to leave the city, but since Tommy didn't, we might have a huge problem on our hands. So let's jump into it. This is episode two of Power Book 4, Force. We start the episode off with Tommy outside, looking at the city of Chicago, smoking a little bit. Now, he's going through his phone and he's reminiscing. He sees Lakeisha in there, he sees a picture of Cash, but then he ends up getting a call from his brother JP. And the reason that call came in is because a Dodge Magnum pulled up. Remember, they haven't made these in years. So anybody riding around in a Dodge Magnum, go ahead and assume that they're up to no good. And it's tinted out. Yeah, well, they pull up, they roll the window down, and they shoot this place up. I'm talking about tearing the bar up, all the windows. Man, it's a pigsty in here now. It turns out JP and his father, they own this little business. They have a stage in there so you can listen to some live music and a little bar. Now, Tommy, he comes in, he's saying, why am I the first person you called? You don't have anyone else? And he said, I called you because you're family. Now, Tommy's looking at it, and like I did in the breakdown, I thought this was a front. And that's what Tommy is saying. You're not paying for protection? And you hear JP say they don't have any money for that because his father is sick. Now, him and his father, they've been owning this. Without his dad there, it's really just all put on him. And also, JP, he had an ex-husband. And Tommy was like, well, you know, an ex is an ex. Now, JP tells Tommy, this is the third time the building had been hit. At this point, put the boards up over the wall. There's no point even continuing to have this business. Because what if you had patrons in there and it got shot up? That's a lot of liability that's going to be on you and insurance. But Tommy gives JP 10000 and says, look, I got an idea, a way to make some money, make some money. So this is showing us Tommy's about to get in these streets. We're all wondering how much money did Tommy actually had when he left New York City. He just gave his brother 10000 and now he's looking for somewhere to at least stay at. Now, this is an engine company, so it looks like an old firehouse, and it says for lease, cash only. So Tommy, he might take this spot, and this is where he's living at, in an abandoned fire station. This is the scene that I broke down when the exclusive clip dropped. It's between Walter and his son, Vic. Now, what we see from Walter is he's on the phone, and he needs to get some more checkups, because it seems like he's sick. And when Vic comes in, he's over the table coughing and stuff. Now, Vic is saying we need to warn Claudia so we can get ahead of this, like whatever happened to their mother. Now, Walter, he's saying, no, 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 no. We don't need none of that. And you can't tell Claudia. But this is where he goes in to tell Vic that you need to take over the organization once I'm gone. Now, I built it up and I actually got the captions on. So I heard what he said. He said, Ireland. However, he's running it. That's just here. But Ireland, back at home, they oversee this whole organization and operation. Basically, what he's telling Vic is, you can't mess this up. I'm running things the way I run it because Ireland wants it this way. And if you go against them, yeah, you're going to die. Consequences, death. There's just no other way around it. Now, Vic, we know he might not be ready for this, but he has to be. This is his destiny, according to his father. The brothers, Jannard and Diamond, they're at the barber shop. Now, Jannard, we know he in the streets. He got the ice on, the Fendi suit. He's trying to tell Diamond, we got to get some of these young guys up under us. They wild. They, they out here. They doing. They going to make us some money. Now, Diamond, he's been on the inside. He looks outside. And there's some younger dudes. But he knows the streets. And he's saying, we can't have those dudes. They young, wild, unpredictable, reckless. If they shoot somebody, all of it's going to come back on us. So Diamond's trying to keep all that street stuff. If we're going to do it, we need to do it right. Jannard, he just sees some young hitters out there, which is going to bring in quick money. But of course, with that quick money, it's going to bring in a lot of eyes. We already seen that there's a sheriff in here questioning Diamond. So Diamond really doesn't want any of that around the barbershop, which is legit. Tommy's moving around the city. He hops out the car with a bag. He gets hit in the back of the head by this girl with a gun. They start fighting. He punches her. She gets up with a knife and he looks and he notices her. If you can see, there's a scar on the side of her face. If you remember the OG power, this is Lillian. You remember she was one of the couriers for Tommy and Ghost. She got this scar on her face because pink sneakers is the one that cut her up. Now, Tommy wanted to kill her. 
But Ghost told him not to because she didn't go to the cops. She didn't snitch. So they sent Julio over there when she was in the hospital to tell her, look, you won't be working with us anymore. Now, Tommy, he's like, man, I should have killed you because now she's coming back and attacking him because she thinks that Tommy's trying to kill her. The police pull up. So he, Tommy doesn't get the finisher like he wants to. But if they haven't died in power, we know, according to Courtney Kemp, they can always come back. And we have Lillian from the first episode of the original power. She also told Tommy before walking off, I got the drop on you. I can do it again. Now, Tommy's like, damn, I messed up my good jacket. So we know as long as she's in the city, Tommy's going to have to watch his back a little bit, or at least be a little bit more aware of his surroundings because he was not expecting her to jump out. They give us a little shower scene of Gloria. She hops out. When she goes into the kitchen, didn't dry off, just put the robe on, walking around the house. Victor is in here. Now, I've been touching on this whole week that these two had an intimate past, and it turns out I was right. Now, he's saying once my dad leaves, I'll be free to do whatever. And she's saying, no, within the Irish family, you need to get you an Irish woman, a pure white woman, to carry on the legacy. She doesn't fit in the plan. Now, Victor has a key to the house, and she's saying, Victor, let me get the key back. I love you because of your loyalty. Victor tells her, if you don't want me to have this key, then you need to change the locks. So these two, they're still together. And we also hear Vic say, is there someone else? I told you guys in the breakdown coming into this, if he finds out that Tommy is messing with Gloria, this is going to make him upset. Tommy shows up with the bag to the barbershop to give it back to Diamond. Now, this is all the drugs and money that he took from Diamond's brother, Jannard and Vic that night. Now, when he gets in here, they patting him down because you heard Jannard, he already had some young goons out here. So they patting him down. And Tommy's like, look, man, I got a gun on me. Take it up off me. But what he wants to do is make things right between him, Jannard, and Diamond. So he's returning all the product and he's letting them know that this work is stepped on. Jannard in the back looking like Rico from Paid in Full. And Diamond is saying, why didn't you keep all this? Tommy said, look, that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to make things right. And you hear Jannard say, I would at least kept the money. And Tommy tells him, that's the difference between me and you. I want to actually get in the game. And plus, all those drugs and stuff, it ain't even worth it. So Diamond is seeing, okay, Tommy, I didn't know where you were. You had our product and money, but you brought it back. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of trustworthiness right there. When Tommy tries to leave, the young boys pull the guns on him. They're like, oh, no, no, no. We don't want no trouble because Tommy choked out one of the dudes. Now, they're saying, Diamond, we're not going to listen to you. Who's calling the shots? You or Jannard? Now, while Diamond was locked up, of course, Jannard was calling the shots. So he still wants to show that power position, even though he knows his brother is the one running things. So he tells him, nah, go ahead and put your guns down and they're going to let Tommy get on out of here. But he doesn't want to lose the confidence of the young dudes, because if they see that Diamond's in charge and Jay can't make no moves, he can't make no shots, then why are we listening to him for? Jannard decides to go outside with Tommy because he sees something in this white boy. Okay, you did the same thing with Flynn. You trying to make friends? And Tommy said, no, I'm here to try to make some money. Now, this is part of the, the trailer that we've seen. There were some guys that pull up and they hopped out on them. They got them up against the wall. Tommy thought it was Diamond's people. I originally did too, but it turned out they aren't with Diamond. It turns out this is Rojos' crew. Now, you remember Rojos was the one in prison that said, let him get out, get comfortable, and then we're going to get on him. Now, they're saying that Diamond put him in a wheelchair for the rest of his life, so they must have had a little beef while they were in prison. Now, Tommy, he got mixed up into all this, and what they're telling him is, since you screwed Rojos over, we got eight bricks that you need to sell within three hours. Now, Diamond is saying, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to need somebody, a wheelman with me, because there's a lot of police in the city right now, and he's volunteering Tommy to come in. Now, of course, Tommy is hearing all this, and the whole time the lady is talking, she's talking about, we're going to kill you. He said, don't make a promise you can't keep. So that could be foreshadowing to Tommy coming back and at least getting one of these two. But Tommy, you in the game? You want to make some money? Here we go. Vic and his sister, Claudia, seems like they're close to each other. Now, he's coming in and he's seeing if all the numbers are adding up. She got the money counter going and she's like, the numbers are hitting the numbers. She also mentions a girl named Peggy that she's seen at the gym. We just heard Vic and Gloria talking about how he can't be with her because she's black. Now, Claudia is saying, you got the brass ring to take over the organization after dad is gone, but you don't even know what to do with it. I told you, Claudia is going to be the one we need to watch. She's going to be the X factor in this family. She's going to be the one probably 
calling all the shots for Vic, even if he is in charge. She'll be the one behind the scenes pulling the strings. Now, also, she's saying, look, I got the next big thing in Chicago because we've been losing money. Now, we already know Vic heard from his father. We have to run it exactly how Ireland wants. Now, she has a little chemical solution and some pills that she met from a girl in the club that she wants to do. But Vic isn't on board with it right now. Tommy and Diamond got three hours to give her the eight bricks. When they tell you that the block is hot, there's cops everywhere. Diamond said there was 37 shootings in the last weekend. So now they're riding around. But Tommy wants to know what's really going on. How did this beef between you and Rojos happen? Well, it turned out while he was in, Rojos was trying to take some business away from Jannard and CBI. So he went ahead and whooped on him. Tommy's like, why didn't you kill him? Well, obviously, he didn't want to get life while he was in there doing that 15 year sentence. Tommy says, look. All I want to do is get some money. At the end of this, you break me off a little bit of money, however much it is, because I don't have a limit. You go your way and I go mine. So this bond is starting to build between these two. And right now, it's not like a friendship or anything. It's just we work together and that's it. The pressure is on Tommy and Diamond. Now, the guy that kidnapped him, he's on the phone with Rojos. And Rojos said, hey, we need that money by tonight for the cartel. Because you got to remember, these people are just pawns in the whole big scheme of things. Rojos is running things from the jail, but he still has to answer to somebody. And now this guy, he said, we're going to make it interesting. I see Jannard, Diamond's brother. The guy with the dreads that was at the barbershop, his name is Elijah. Now, he's supposed to be meeting up with Jannard, and then they're going to do everything they got to do. But while this is going on, Jannard doesn't answer. And Tommy and Diamond, they get pulled over by two cop cars. Tommy's talking about be cool diamond. He's like, man, driving my black, bro. This is coast to coast, man. I don't want to go back. I just got out of jail. Tommy like, chill. The cops hit the lights and they actually drive off. I know that feeling. Every time they hop behind you, you like, damn, here we go again. So you try to get in that slow lane. <laughs> we got classic Tommy. Tommy is saying, look, once we drop these bricks off, people going to know, you know, when eight keys are getting moved, people in the city that need to know, they going to know. So he tells diamond. Look, circle the block. If I ain't out, by the time you make it around one time, Diamond said, yeah, take off. Tommy's like, nah, man, do it again. Just circle it again. Diamond said, I'm going to have eyes on you the whole time. Tommy was like, man, I'm tough and I ain't scared of nothing, but damn, can I have a little bit of backup? Tommy comes into this little chop shop and he doesn't have anything in his hands because he wants to be prepared for whatever happens. Now, he comes in clean. He just wants to let them know, look, I'm just here to drop off something. She's saying, where's my package? They pat him down. Tommy says it's outside under the trash can. And if it ain't out there and something sets y'all up, you can go ahead and cut me up. Now, he tries to, you know, make light of the situation and says, I got a 69 Mustang. Could you look at it? She said, don't nobody care about that. We here for business. The deal went through. Now it's time to pay Tommy. You know, his Spanish isn't that good. She asked, do you work strictly with Rojos? He tells her, I'm a free agent and I'll find you first, Tia. He called her his auntie. <laughs> We made some money. Now Tommy and Diamond, they're thinking about the good old days when they were in the game. How they're junkies for the money, not for the drug, but that first time they touched $10,000. And Diamond is trying to explain to Tommy that his brother Jannard doesn't understand back in the day, this is how we had to do it. Play it slow, look at every angle and make it happen. Y'all know, you gotta be cautious with it. You can't have all these young wild dudes. But while they're driving, they get a FaceTime call from Jannard. It turned into a real live GTA mission. I'm talking about they got him on FaceTime. They kidnapped him. They whooped on him and told him, you got an hour. It's hot out here. So instead of that whole three hours they got, they probably only got like maybe let's say an hour 45 to get rid of all of these keys. Now Diamond is upset. He's trying to save his brother because he's been looking out for him his whole life. They got a speed to get these things done. When it comes to making money, Tommy doesn't discriminate. Religion doesn't matter. Christian, Buddhist, Jewish. Catholic, it doesn't matter. Muslim, Tommy, all he sees is green. Now he's doing a deal with these gentlemen. They trust Rojos' product is good. They just don't know Tommy. So they're running multiple tests on it and it's taking a lot of time, which got Diamond outside kind of antsy. So he's about to come in and see what's delaying everything. Diamond comes in, he's trying to stall. He wants to look in the back. Now the butcher knows what's going on back there. So he's kind of standing in the doorway. But what he's doing is stalling because if something goes down, He'll at least be in here already to help Tommy out. So he's like, let me get two pounds of pastrami, lean, like two pounds of pastrami. Don't nobody order that much pastrami, not this time of year. And uh, let me get some of them cinnamon cookies. We all good. We got the money. Diamond sees Tommy. He's like, all right, that's enough. Uh, shalom, brother. Basically telling him goodbye. 
thank you for that. We know Vic isn't going to talk directly to Walter. Now, he's trying to tell Claudia, chill. Pop's got us running the coke just how Ireland wants. Now, she's trying to present to the dad that she has something new because coke is dated. The young people, they want those pills. They want that chemical reaction that hits them quick, and it doesn't cost as much as this. Now, Walter, he's getting upset. We know that he's sick, and he also told Vic, this is how I want it ran because that's how Ireland wants it ran. He tells her to stop trying to get into a room that you're not invited. Vic runs the street. You handle the books. Leave it at that. Claudia, she hears it. This just shows that she's going to start to branch off a little bit from the family and try to do things behind her father's back. The next drop is with a junkie in an abandoned house. Tommy comes in here. He hands him the brick. And instead of doing a test on it, he takes a bump of it, cuts in it. Then he nods out. And Tommy's like, man, what the hell? So he actually likes to go over there and pat him down and get the money up out of his pocket. Because the guy, it ain't no telling how much drugs he's been on before Tommy even got here. Now outside, it isn't looking too good for Diamond because the police are pulling up on him. The cop wants the registration because he pulled Diamond over. He said he's seen him on his phone. We know he has an hour to make these drops, so he's out here probably making calls and things. But Diamond tells him, I'm going to keep my hands on the steering wheel because I don't want to be perceived as a threat. Now, we already know what type of situation he's in. A lot of us, we've been there and we see it day to day on the news. So Diamond is just taking all the precautions to not be perceived as a threat. But the cop says, I'm not going to ask you again. Get that license and registration. Just what I was explaining. We see this day to day. The cop pulls a gun. You're operating a car that isn't yours. Get out of the vehicle. Diamond's like, you can hear the pain in his voice. He's like, I'm not letting go of this steering wheel. First of all, it's not even his car. We don't even know if Tommy has it registered. But luckily enough, Tommy comes out. And he's asking, is there, is there a problem, officer? Tommy uses his white privilege. Hey, bro, that's my car. Is everything all right? That's my barber in there, David Sampson. He's like, oh, what the hell? Why didn't you say something? Yeah, man, it's crazy how it is. But I like how they put this on the show for us to see. Tommy gets him out of that situation just to pull up in another situation with Rojo's people. They're trying to get his brother Jannar back. They came out all black on. I told you, these aren't Mecca's hitters. They stopped him before they even made it in. Mecca's people would let them come in and get some shots off. But when well, you got that beam on your chest and there's three of them, you can be very cautious with what you do next. They got the money. It's a fair exchange. Although Jannard is kind of whooped up on, he still got the Fendi outfit on. So we good for the most part. Now, it's best to go ahead and get up out of here because they got the upper hand on us. $25,000 goes to Tommy for a good day's work. Now, Diamond, he's like, how did you know my name? Now, Tommy, we know that he looked up on the on a Google search, seen CBI, but he also seen it on the barber license inside of the barber shop. Now, one thing that Diamond is saying is he observed Tommy watching all of the routes that they were taking in the drop offs. And he's saying, Tommy, you're not the type of guy for backup. You know what I'm saying? You're the type of dude that seems like he's trying to get in some action and make it happen. And Tommy said, maybe I am. Let's see what happens. So is that mutual respect between the two because they both run the game the same way. It's just we don't really know each other at this point. We just in it together because Rojo's people got at us earlier today. Tommy pulls up to his grandma's house and JP's in there. Now they start reminiscing. He's asking Tommy, do you remember anything in the house? Tommy like, yeah, that couch. JP like, yeah, man, you go outside, you sweat and you come in there and be sticking to the damn couch. Now, see, my grandma out in Virginia, she ain't had no plastic on the couch. We just wasn't allowed in the living room. Hell, you didn't even want to be in the house. It was hotter in the house than it was outside. I'm talking country, country. But Tommy gives JP some money like, man, use this for the club for some damages. JP puts in a VHS. I'm talking about this is back in 1985 when Tommy was young with Kate. Now, that camcorder they had was one of the big ones. You got to hold on the shoulder like this. But JP saying he doesn't see how Kate left her son talking about him. He would never do that. And Tommy is saying you wouldn't know that. Well, come to find out, JP actually has a son and he hasn't seen him since he was two years old. His mother took him away once he came out of the closet. Now, he's saying he doesn't know who his son is, where he's at, what he's doing. And they give us a glimpse of him. This guy has that. He got that weapon on him with the silencer. Now, you already got that automatic weapon illegally, and then you got a silencer on top of it. Don't even expect to get out of jail if you get caught with this. But he does have a picture of him and JP in there. 
And JP is saying the only family he has is him and his father. And now that Tommy showed up, his brother. Now you hear JP say, I never had a brother. That's because Tommy was gone with Kate. But you hear Tommy, he say, I did. Because he considered James Ghost his brother. It's cold outside. Gloria got some soup. Tommy wants to know, can I stop by later? And guess what? The kitchen is open. Sure, go ahead. Stop by. I'm here. But nothing is ever what it seems with Tommy. The two people that kidnapped him and Diamond, the girl and the guy that worked for Rojos, well, he kidnapped them. He's wiping the blood off his face with old boy's shirt and you hear him in the trunk. Rojos is going to kill you. Well, let's see what Tommy's going to do with these two goofies. Before Tommy leaves, he takes a hit of the vodka, pours it on the trunk of the car, walks it away, makes a little trail, drops a lighter on it, and these two are gone. See, they didn't have to kidnap nobody. Look what they did. They just got themselves killed. Tommy is officially in Chicago. It is on in Chicago now. Chirac, we really about to live it. Tommy goes to the barbershop, knocks on the window. They looking like, what the hell? And he shows the guy's shirt. So he got back for Diamond and Jannar with this one. And when Tommy walks off, he tells him, now y'all owe me one more. You hear Jannar, oh fuck. That's because it's war time now. It is war. We seen JP's son has dreads. This gentleman here is Elijah. He's a young guy and he's working for Jannar. I don't know if, if this is Elijah or not. We haven't seen the tattoos, but you know me, I'm gonna do a little digging and we're gonna find out if Elijah is actually JP's son that he hasn't seen. I told you the downfall would always be a woman. Vic is sitting outside the bar. He's been watching Gloria because he already assumed that she was messing with somebody. And guess what he sees inside the bar? Mr. Tommy talking to Gloria. Tommy and Gloria, they at the bar. They're getting to know each other a little bit. Loosen up with a drain, especially after you just blew up a car with two people in the trunk. Now, her original plan was to open up a nice little Jamaican cuisine, you know, something nice. But she got in the bar business. Now, you hear Tommy, he ain't here cracking his jokes. You know what I'm saying? He's just playing it smooth right now. But she wants to know, why did Tommy actually come back to the city? He said he found a reason to stay. And that, I'm thinking that might be partially because of his brother, JP. But also, him and Diamond are about to make some money. And he feels like he can breathe in this city. But they get to kissing. And of course, outside, Vic is watching all of this. After Tommy gets his little late night kiss in with Gloria, he heads over to the building that's for lease. Now there's somebody in there and Tommy starts knocking on the door. The guy opens up the door and you can tell that he's in need of some money. That's why he said cash offer only. Now Tommy gives him 5,000, maybe 10,000, depending on how he keeps his bank rolls. But it's a tight knit $100, you know what I'm saying, $100 roll. But the guy says, you know, I got a good memory because Tommy wants him to forget who he is. So he's like, I got a pretty good memory, AKA, let me get a little bit more money than this. So Tommy gives him maybe about $10,000, $20,000. The guy's like, I'm gonna get my toothbrush and I'm out of here. After giving him all that money, he's like, I'm gonna go get my toothbrush. Tommy pulled a gun out, said, man, get, get your ass up out of here. Go buy a new one. Tommy wants to get in the building right now. He been on the street all day. Tommy is really living GTA in real life. He bought an abandoned fire station, and when he comes in here, it's a strip pole in there. There's a bed, a couch, a poker table. All he has to do is renovate it a little bit, and it's, it's home. He even got a map on the wall of the whole city from the engine company, 145. He's looking at it. So either he's looking at like the routes that come into Chicago in case they got to get things in and out, but also what's around the area because you don't want to be on your phone too much. You know, all that stuff gets tracked. We see Lillian back at the house just chilling. All of a sudden, she picks up the phone because she hears some noise. Tommy come in the house and he start whooping Lillian's ass. But he wants to know before he kills her, who else knows that he's in Chicago? Now, at first, she's saying divine intervention. She's lying. And he starts getting on her ass a little bit more, kicking her, pistol whipping her. And she's saying she heard that there was a white boy in Chicago. So Blue Mustang, she knew about Tommy having all this. So she wanted to get Tommy before he could get her. While he's stomping around the kitchen, scaring the hell out of Lillian, she bleeding from the head. He stomps a little hard and there was a hollow part in the floor. And when Tommy looks in there, mm -hmm, we got some more work. This brick has a spider on it too. So whoever has a spider, we're gonna need to look out for that going forward. Tommy also gets upset and says, everybody that ghost let live out of his generosity, it came back to bite him in the butt. But in this case, 
It's good to see old friends, Lillian. My man just got a couple of keys. We out. There you go, episode two of Power Book 4 Forest. This is exactly what we've been asking for. We wanted a Tommy show where we got OG Tommy in the streets, busting heads, making moves. This is exactly what we're looking for. Let me know what you think is gonna happen with Tommy in this new brick. And also, is Rojo's gonna find out that Tommy is the one that got rid of his two workers? Let me know what you guys think. I'm ODIJ. If you like the content on the channel, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I don't know if we're going to do the live stream at 9 p.m. Eastern because of the Super Bowl, but if the Super Bowl is over, we will be on at 9 p.m. Eastern Sunday. If it goes a little longer, we'll start right after that. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on the beat, boy.